Hello guys, and welcome to another story time. <laughs> no, it's not going to be another creepypasta. Well, it's more like a horror story, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, today we are going to be reading Five Nights at Tony's. I don't know how do you pronounce it, but Caddy, if, you, if you're if you watching this, let me know if I pronounce that way. But anyway, as you can tell, this is not written by me at all. This is actually written by Candy himself. Candy Cap Plus Production. So go subscribe to him because... He wrote this amazing novel, and I'm going to be reading through night one. Well, part of night one, I guess, because if I do it too long, then the video will probably not be uploaded on YouTube. But anyway, let's get started with the story, starting with night one. Will this nightmare just end already? It was 9 a.m. Senior in college, Ellie Page is heading downtown to the one and only Tony's Funhouse to hopefully land a job there. Oh, jeez, oh, jeez, oh, jeez, I'm so nervous, Ellie said to herself. She spent all of last week making, tweaking, and editing her resume, professions, anything she could to hopefully get a job there. She was never the best at writing, but she hoped to that the resume would do nicely to get her some cash. She turned on the air conditioning, music, and started to sing, so hopefully she can just relax enough just to speak. At 9.34, she finally arrives. She gets out and walks to the entrance. The building was very noticeable. It had a slick, modern design to it and was bursting with color. Up top, the main gal herself, Tony waving her hand with the words, Tony's Funhouse, on either side. On the left of her was Conga and Wendy's logos. And on the right-hand side, Cody and Game logos. Oh, wow. This place looks great, Ellie said. Let's just hope this place beats the other one. God, that place sucks. She entered the building. Two kids rush past her as she enters. To the right of her is the party area. All eight rainbow tables packed to the max with children, all watching Tony and Wendy singing and dancing. She couldn't believe how advanced the animatronics are. They were doing spins. They were walking. They even jumped. The movements were very smooth, almost human movement. It was all so advanced. To the left of her was the game and area and prizes. All of the newest games were there, like Sega Sonic and the X-Men. I used to love the X-Men, Ellie thought. She walks through the arcade area and somehow gets lost in the maze. An abundance of arcades, shoot-ems, ice hockey, etc. She somehow managed to stumble on the trampoline area. Oh, God dang, this place is huge, said in irritation. A little girl walked up to her. Hi, Miss Redhead. Oh, hello, little girl. Do you know the way to the, uh, gorilla room? Yeah, he's over there. She says as she points to an open, barely visible. Okay, thank you, dear. She stumbles to her feet and about to leave the area. She then gets yanked back by the little girl. Jump with me, jump with me, she says exhaustedly. Oh, dear, I I'm sorry, I, I can't right now. I, I need to get going. The little girl so doesn't really seem to care. She takes one big jump, giving Ellie some irritation. But then again, she doesn't want to hurt her feelings, so she proceeds to jump with her. A couple of minutes go by, and the little girl runs off. Okay, now I can actually head to the interview. She stumbles off of the trampoline area and passes Kong's room, and then the hide-and-seek kitty's area. Are those plushies or animatronics? She thought while looking at the sloth. She also noticed a bird and a turtle, similar build to Cody. They were soft and had plush material on them, but could still hear the faint sounds of gears. They have to be animatronic, right? This plant is advanced, but not that advanced. She continued her way to the office. Hello, so sorry to keep you waiting, sir. Where were you? He said in force. Ellie knew she shouldn't have waited to meet with him. Stanford was always a tough owner ever since his location closed down in 1989. Really a tragedy what happened there. Sorry, I was getting out of classes. A kid wanted to play. I don't want to hear it. Just sit down. Ellie immediately sits down. Name? Um, Ellie Page, she says, trying not to piss him off. Age? Um, 21, sir? All right, enough with that. Um, crap, please. Stanford said fiercely. Ellie gulps. Yes, sir. Let me see your resume, please. 
Oh, yes, of course. She says as she reaches into her pocket tortoise backpack. Is that show still a thing? Stanford said. Oh, no, no, no. It ended a while ago, but a special recently aired on CBS. She says nervously as she hands Stanford the resume. I gotta check that out, he says, exhaustedly. Stanford looks at the resume. He smiles, then frowns, and then smiles again. Ellie knew he was, he had a very mixed feeling with the resume she had given him. Oh no, he doesn't like it, he doesn't like it! She's stinking to herself, trembling on the inside. Listen, he said, I don't really want to be here right now. You don't want to be here right now. So, here's the deal. So I can go on St. Phil. You can come in for the night shift on Monday. It can be a trial. If it goes well, I'll give you the job permanently. Night shift? Yeah. You say you're nocturnal, oh, never sleep, and plus we really need a guard here at night. Apparently, there are noises coming from here at night. I think someone's trying to rob my restaurant. So, yes or no? Um, well, I mean... Tick tock on the clock, Ellie. Uh, yes. Yes, I'll, I'll take the job. She closes the door. Sir. Excellent. Go with me. I'll give you your uniform. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, just follow me and you'll see. They head to the props room. The room is filled to the brim with miscellaneous stuff. There's costumes for the robots, props, lights, even some backdrops and set pieces. Stanford heads to one of the lockers. Just one minute, dear. Okay, Ellie said softly. She looks around and until she spots something. Two animatronics, although they don't look as grand or modern as the others. They look like spring lock suits from the 70s and the 80s. One was a right rabbit with a purple bow tie. It was quite big and bulky, like you could fit two people in there. The other looked like Tony, but it didn't at the same time. It had a darker coat of orange and a lot more stripes, and the white was fading. Hey, which ones are those? Oh, those were old and walk-around suits for the old Tonys, you know. The rabbit was mine and the tiger was for the other owner. Oh, they they look pretty cool. Yes, yeah, cool. He takes out a uniform. The button-up shirt is blue. Kind of looks like a mall cop outfit with black pants. He has a bow tie and a security hat with tiger ears on it. Um, tiger ears, she said in confusion. I like to have fun. Now take it and be here by 12 at night in the morning. He gives the suit to Ellie, and they walk out of the props room. Thank you, sir, for the job. I, I really needed one. Oh, it's no problem. A woman approaches them. The other owner, Michelle. Her red hair and purple skirt giving off a glow from the stage lights. Hey, Stanford, buddy, my man, what's up? She said in a peppy manner. Hello, Michelle. Stanford says firmly. Oh, you're the other owner. Hi, I'm Ellie. She puts out her hand, but Michelle instead responds with, I don't shake hands. Oh, sorry. Michelle brings her, I mean, <laughs> Ellie brings her hand back to her side. I just came to give you some TPS reports. Michelle hands stand for the reports. Thank you. You may leave now, he said stubbornly. Michelle takes a sigh and walks to the office. Same for you too, Ellie. Oh, of course. Bye, sir. Ha have a good one, sir. She says nervously, but then heads back to the car, turns on the video, and drives back home safely. Happily, I mean. <laughs> Sorry, Candy, if not reading your story right, but I did read part one of your story, and so far, I really like this so far. I think I'm going to really enjoy reading this and showing it to the world and how amazing you are. But anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for listening to me kind of screwing up in this story. I'm not much of a good reader, but I will try my hardest reading this story. And so far, part part of night one is really, like, really amazing. I can just image imagine how amazing this would be if it was real or anything like that. But Candy, keep up the good work, and I promise I'll continue reading your Five Nights at Tony's, like, stories. I promise I'll continue reading them. So far, it's really good. But anyway, if you guys really did enjoy this video, please leave a like and comment below if you want more of this stuff. I'm definitely going to read the rest of night one as well as the other nights in this phase one novel. 
And also, be sure to subscribe to Candy Cat Plush Productions for making this amazing story. So far, I like it. It's really good. And I'm really excited to see what's going to come throughout the Five Nights at Tony's universe. But anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. And thank you for listening to me screwing up the story a little bit. Sorry about that. Like I said, my reading's not good. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. This reality, my mentality, everything changes so rapidly. And I'm ready for the never-ending fire. Dancing with my deepest, dark desires. Miracle, how empirical. Don't know anything quite hysterical. Everything around me transpires. As I fulfill my darkest desires.